Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, everybody. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We welcome those coming by Facebook, Lord's House of Prayer, Sincere Milk of the Word, Sunday morning intercessory prayer and worship service. But the word reminds us, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies, all envy and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be I tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. So let's get to the word. Amen. Um, we've been talking about um, the body of Christ. And we're going to, um, we left off last week in Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to go back there. we actually been talking about the gifts. We're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Actually, um, Mother, um, we're going to use this one. Amen. Um, until we get our other thing. Um, Amen. And so we're going to go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Because as I say, I believe God is preparing us. Amen. For the work that he has for us to do. Thank you, Jesus. And so we're going to look at Ephesians, some um, few things in Ephesians chapter 4. And then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to deal with that on today as the Lord leads. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. And we read most of this, so we're going to kind of go over it, but it's a few things I want to touch on, amen, before we um, deal with uh, the love chapter. Listen to what he says. I therefore, form one, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you or beg you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. And we are called to be what? Kings and what? Priests. Priests. And our main function in the earth at this time is as priests to intercede between the people and God. Amen. When he comes again, we're going to reign as kings. But we've already, just like David, you remember David had the anointing of a king before, before he was appointed king. That's why he was killing his ten thousands while Saul was just killing his thousands. So you have to remember too, you have the anointing of a king on you. Amen. And that's what the Bible said. We have been given power over all the works of the enemy so that nothing can by any means harm us. Do you realize when you read the scripture, <coughs> Israel, when they walked in obedience to the word of God, if they went out to war with 5,000 men at the end of the war, they would come back with how many? 5,000. They would kill the enemy, but the enemy could not kill them. Why? Because they was under the protection of God. Amen. That's why we, we, we read that no weapon formed will prosper. But when they went out in disobedience, they couldn't even deal with a little, little town like Ai. See, saints, that's why it is so important that we walk in obedience to the word of God. Amen. And we're going to see that before this, this day is over. Okay. But he tells us to do what? Walk worthy. Walk in such a way that you understand that you are a king, you are a priest. And you can't live your life like normal folk. 
Amen. We are extraordinary. Yes, we are yes. not ordinary people. Yes. When Samson, when the anointing came on him, he was not normal. Amen. And so we have to remember that. Amen. We have something extra. We got the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why I can't get with all this weak preaching. I still believe you can live holy. Amen. What do you think you got the Holy Ghost for? Amen. If God wanted us to stay in a weak state, Jesus wouldn't have had to come and die. That was under the law. The law was good enough to cover our sins. It took the blood of Jesus to wash them away. Amen. And, and we have to understand when he's, we, we, you know, sometimes I think we forget. We use the word, but I think we forget what it really means to be saved. Because sometimes I have to ask for, what are you saved from? Because everything you was doing for your God saved. How you still doing it? If the wages of sin is death, and it is according to the Bible, amen, God had to save you from your sin in order to deliver you from death. Death has no power over you unless sin is in you. Remember what the Bible said? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. God, through Christ, dealt with both of them. But as long as there is sin in your life, then death has power over you. We got to get back to teaching the truth. Amen. Amen. And, and I was just, when I, I was over, just meditating in the word and praying and just remembering what the Bible says, it, it talks about the fact that. Um, what is that scripture? Now it doesn't escape me. Amen. But it talks about the fact that we are to live our lives blameless before God. Amen. And so we are not to get content. You know how sometimes you get saved, but we, 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 if we're not careful, we get content because we ain't drinking, because we ain't smoking, because we ain't committing fornication. But what about all that other stuff yeah. that go on in the church? Right. That line, that backbite. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to ask God to cleanse us from what? Oh. Everything that's not like him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I'm, I'm of the opinion, and, and, and you might say, there are big sins and little sins, but all sins going to take you to the same place. So it ain't going to matter. <laughs> Amen. And that's what the book said. All unrighteousness. So we, we, don't, we don't get caught up in that white lies and black lies. All lies are going to have their part in the lake. So we, we have to get back to preaching what, what the Bible said. Write the vision and make it plain. Yes. The wages of sin is yes. still. Yes. And God does not deal with a sinner's sin different from what I, how he deals with a saint's sin. Right. I've heard that lie. <laughs> Amen. God deal with a sinner's sin different than he deal with a saint. Sin is sin. Yes. He said, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so the soul of the Son. But the soul that sinneth, yes. it shall die. Amen. Amen. So God is calling us, saints, to walk worthy. Mm -hmm. See, we don't want to get caught up in the gifts. Mm -hmm. And our relationship is ragged. We so, we so wanting to preach and we want to sing and we want to, uh, whatever it is we want to do, but we don't want to live right. But I want to remind us and what we've been learning as we've been looking through these gifts, and we're going to see it today. The purpose of the gifts is to bring you to a better relationship with God. Bring us to a place of maturity 
of perfection. See, because <clears throat> a mature person, it doesn't say, me, if you mature, that doesn't mean you, you, you're never going to trip. Mm -hmm. You're never going to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. But a mature person deals with their trips and their mistakes differently right. than yeah. an immature. If you mature, you ain't going to try to cover it up. That's mm -hmm. right. You're going to deal with it. Right. Like the song mother sings, she said, it's me. It's me. It's me. Uh -huh. See, immature folk point at everybody else and blame everybody else for their mess. A mature person said, I own it. It's me, Lord. Help me. Amen. So he's telling us, walk what? Word. Now listen what he said in chapter, verse 2. With all what? Lowliness and meekness. Why? Because God exalts the lowly, but he abased the pride. So he said, with all lowliness and meekness. And let me say this. Meekness don't mean weakness. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just because you're meek don't mean you're weak. That's right. Amen. You just know how to control yourself. Uh -huh. You know when to speak and when to be quiet. Uh -huh. Amen. With long, long. suffering. <laughs> Forbearing one another. Huh? Yeah, We're going to talk about that love. Because that's, that's it right there. Listen what he said. Endeavoring. Mm -hmm. To keep the what? Unity of the Spirit. The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're finna look at, as we did last week, the seven points of unity. There is one body and one Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the body is of who? Christ. Mm -hmm. The Spirit is of God. And the Bible said, we read in the 12th chapter of um, 1 Corinthians, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Okay. Even as ye are called in what? One hope of your calling. What is that one hope? Eternal life. It's not the hope of a new car, a house on the hill. That's not it. The one hope that we all have in common is eternal life. Yes. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay, those are the seven points of what? Unity. Now, Here's the points of diversity, as we learn in chapter 12. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So your, the measure of grace you get corresponds with the measure of the gift that God has given you. In other words, he doesn't give you more grace than you need to operate your gift. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the grace for the gift, then you shouldn't be trying to fool with him. Mm -hmm. You remember what the Bible says? Uh, who was it? Paul, Peter said, Beloved, be not many masters, mm -hmm. master meaning teachers, knowing that we're going to receive the greater condemnation. Amen. Sometimes people want to be in ministry and don't have a clue right. the yes. burden that you are under, the responsibility that you have. Yes. Folk want to be pastors and can't pastor themselves. Right. <laughs> See, this ain't no this ain't no joke. I'm responsible for every soul that God puts under my watch. So if I didn't have the grace to do what I'm doing, I promise you, I told my wife, I wouldn't be up here. I'd find me somewhere to be and be there and be wherever God put me in that place to be. Amen. 
But sometimes what the enemy does, he has us looking on people with gifts and we just see what we think is the glory and we want it. You see people laying hands on the sick and they recover. You don't know what that person had to go through. You don't know the attacks that that person is under because the enemy is trying to take them out. You just see the glory. You don't understand the responsibility. People want to be apostles. Do you understand what it means to really, I ain't talking about these self-made apostles. I'm talking about an apostle of Jesus Christ. You better go back and read what Paul said. He said, I perceive that God has set forth the apostles, us apostles, last as it is pertaining to suffering. We made a spectacle. Go back and read all that Paul had to go through, all that the other apostles had to go through. Now you see these apostles, they sitting up with gold rings and, and, and people waiting on them hand and foot and all of this. That ain't the life of the, a, a biblical apostle. A life of a biblical apostle was suffering. Paul was homeless. Go back and read it. In Corinthians, he said, until this very hour, I have no certain dwelling place. Go look it up in the strong concordance. It means homeless. Mm -hmm. Amen. He talks about all the sufferings he went through. Yes. And the Lord let me understand something. One time, you know, because, you know, we, we like to sing these songs. And they sound good. And I'm sure we really, we really mean it. You know, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. And, and we, put, we had the nerve to put that just like Jesus. <laughs> Not like it, but just like Jesus. Oh, how I want to be like him. And that's good. But one day the Lord began to deal with me, took me to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. He said, I was despised and rejected a man. And then he paused and said, do you still want to be like me? <laughs> a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Do you still want to be like me? They hid, as it were, their faces from me. I was despised and not esteemed. Do you still? Apostles came and two of them. And they, and they even got their mama involved and asked for John and James. He said, we, I have something that I want to ask for my sons. In your, in, your, in your glory, can one sit on the right and the other sit on the left? Jesus didn't say no. He said, woman, y'all don't, don't even know what y'all asking for. He said, can you endure the suffering? Can you drink from the cup I'm about to drink from? And the baptism that I'm about to be baptized with, can you be baptized in it? The baptism in suffering. And they said, yeah, we can. <laughs> but he said, but to sit on the right and the left, that ain't mine to give. It's for whom it was prepared for. We got to get back to the scripture so we can get some understanding. Amen. Amen. And so that's why it's so important for you to develop a relationship with God so that he, wherever he decides to put you, you good thing. You ain't wanting stuff that don't, why? Because grace is given, I want you to get this, grace is given according to the measure of the gift. Everybody don't have the same measure teaching gift. You don't have the same prophecy gift. You, everybody don't have the same measure. But God is only going to give you grace according to the measure of the gift that he gives you. Amen. I guess this is why I saw this last night on, on uh, you know, the little short. This, they got this, I guess they got this TikTok challenge now where they you know, the little kids riding toys that go work by batteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got this thing where they're now um, taking the battery that's supposed to be in there 
and put the guy put his a bigger battery, battery for his tool or something. Oh. And he put that thing in there, wow. and then the little girl did it, and that thing, oh. she almost ran, and he was running after her. She was about to, and, and, and he had to apologize because he didn't re realize that's too much power for that little thing. Huh? Some, some people don't understand. You get Bishop Mason's anointing on you, it'll kill you. Amen. The Lord told me something because he said, when Bishop Mason died, there should have been someone to receive that mantle. Just like it was with Elijah and Elisha. Because he said, because the, the point is, we don't need that, they don't need that power in heaven. We need it here on earth. Yes. Right. Huh? yes. <clears throat> but you know what the Lord told me? He said there wasn't nobody humble enough to get that man. Oh, that's it, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. See, you want to be great in God, you got to be real humble. Yes. Because the more glory he put on you. You know what he said about yeah. Moses? You remember when Moses and uh, uh, Aaron and Miriam, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they wanted to talk against Moses because yeah. they was like, uh, he taking too much on him. Right. You know, we prophets just like him. <laughs> huh? All right. And so Moses didn't say nothing. Yeah. Moses like he knew that song if I hold my peace yeah. <laughs> let the Lord deal with y'all yeah. God got upset mm -hmm. and he called all three of them into the okay. boardroom mm -hmm. and he said nah. he got on at Miriam and Aaron mm -hmm. and he said at the end he said were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses right. when there's not another person like him in the earth. Oh. And then I like to, I, I use my imagination. And then he turned around, walked out the boardroom and slammed the door. <laughs> and when he slammed the door, right. Miriam yeah. turned white as right. snow. Leprosy. Leprosy. See, we got to get to Revelation. Yeah. Wherever God puts you is where God wants you. Amen. And that's what he's going to give you the grace. Amen. So we got to endeavor to keep the unity. Yes. Amen. Now let's go back over here. I didn't actually mean to go. Yes, I did. I meant to go wherever God takes me because God All right. God All right. Amen. And, and I've learned. I've learned when you just follow God because you be thinking everybody cool, everybody straight. And you, you be like, Lord, why am I saying this? God know why he's saying this to you. That's right. Somebody in here need to hear. That's right. Amen. Okay, let's go back to verse 7 again. Because remember, I'm not just saying this to be saying it. God preparing us for something. Mm -hmm. I believe. Amen. As we continue to seek God and continue to allow God to purify our hearts and purify our mind, as we make up our mind, we're going to stop playing church. We're going to stop having church. We want to be the church. Yes. God going to work. But you got to get this word. Because the enemy, whenever God starts, I've been listening to y'all talking about, you know, about the fasting, the oh, devil yeah. start working. Well, that's how it that's works. What he, yeah. That's what it that's do. We learned that early, me and my wife. Whenever we start fasting, we, we get ready. He going to show up. Oh, yeah. And that's how it works. You think he wasn't working at the Azusa Street? He going to work. But that's why we have to have this word where? Hid in our hearts. 
And what we're going to get to in a minute, we're going to have to perfect that. More than the gifts, we're going to have to perfect love. Yes. yes. Amen. Watch what he say, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did what? Gave, gave gifts unto men. And why does he give gifts? Because they are the tools that we, he, we used to what? Build the body. Listen to verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first? He had to go down before he could go up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Unto the lower parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Now listen to what he said. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. We call it the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. or the hand. And, and that's why you have to stay full of the Holy Ghost. That's why when we was reading in, in, in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, you kept seeing when he would talk about the gift, but he said, but it's the same spirit. See, we have to get to a place where we understand that we are members of the body. Right. Okay. But ain't nobody in here the head of the body. That's right. All right. All right. Jesus. That includes me. I'm not the head. Amen. Jesus Christ is yes. the head. Yes. And every member needs to be in a place right. where it responds to the desire of the head. Because the Holy Ghost sets the members in the body as it pleases him. We don't get to pick. We can desire, but God might say, no, you can't. You know, when I was in the military, there were some places I wanted to go that they didn't need me. So they didn't send me. <laughs> they sent me what? Thank you. And because I was a soldier, I didn't have no other choice but to go. Because if I did, if I said, well, I, I ain't want to go to Texas. Too high. I want to go to Hawaii. First thing, I would have had to pay my own way. Because they were not going to pay me to go to Hawaii if they wanted me in Texas. And then when I got to the base in Hawaii, they're going to want to know, what are you doing here? We don't have no orders for you. <laughs> and then Texas is going to want to know where you at. You AWOL. <laughs> you know it's an AWOL saints. I'm just going to tell you like it is. Because we have to be where God was. God getting the body right. Those that, that, that want to get right. right. Now, now you know, sometimes your arm will have something um, wrong with it so that it don't respond to the head right. You know. Your, your head telling the arm to, but the arm ain't functioning right. It's paralyzed. You got some members in the body cry, paralyzed. God saying one thing and you, but. Do you have some moving involuntarily? What is that, Parkinson's, where you kind of move involuntarily? Come on now. I'm just trying to help us. <laughs> you know why? Let, let, me, let, me help, let me help you out. The witches are together. Right. And who you think they're coming against? But what does the devil do? He divides us. He gets us to 
he gets us to compromise. How many of you know the devil don't compromise with you? He gets you to compromise with him. Because compromise weakens you and strengthens him. Say this with me. No more compromise. See, there got to be a yes in your spirit to God. Not just, we, we, we can't just sing yes. Amen. Sometimes we got, we got some beautiful songs, amen, that we are not acting out. That's right. The Lord told me one time, he said, I don't want to hear another song about, uh, what is that, Second Chronicles 7, 14. I don't want to hear not another song about if my people. Yes. I just want my people yes. to do it. If my people would you call by my name would humble them. So we got some beautiful songs. But we don't got a whole lot of doing. Mm -hmm. But God is calling us to do it. Humble ourselves. Pray. Yes. Seek his face. And what? Turn from our wicked ways. He said if we do that, he's going to hear from him. How many of you know we need to hear it from him? He will hear from heaven because he is faithful to his word. He has to keep his word. When he sees somebody doing their part, he has to do his part. That's why the Bible says you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, after you've done it, you might receive the promise. Because sometimes we get so impatient. Because God ain't doing it quick enough. You know why he ain't done it yet? Because you ain't finished doing what you was supposed to do. That's right. Amen. <laughs> try, try going in there. You know you finna have a, what is that, colonoscopy? Uh -huh. Try going in there and telling them. Because they're going to want to know, did you do everything we told you to do? My wife, when she was about to have her, this, this last one, um, she was, I went in there, I went, it, it was the morning of, right? And I went in there and she had a little coffee cup just a sipping. And I looked, because I'm the, used to, if you got that cup, there's some coffee in there. <laughs> and I looked at her, I say, are you supposed to be drinking coffee? <laughs> He ain't supposed to be drinking nothing with no color in it. She said, this is water. <laughs> she, and then she told me, do you think I'm going to go through all of that and then mess it up for a cup of coffee? <laughs> so I get over there and they tell me, no, you done messed up. You got to go start on. You know what God is telling some of us? Remember from whence you fall. You need to do your first works again. Because you done messed up. You know what happens to a Nazarite? When, when he, he ain't supposed to um, drink no wine. He ain't even supposed to eat the, the, the uh, grapes. He ain't supposed to even do that. He ain't supposed to cut his hair. He ain't supposed to come at a dead body. He said, like, you got 50 days that you're going to do it. You get to the 49th day and somebody died by him. Your whole 49 days just went out the window. Are we getting this? See, that's why I, I guard. I guard this walk that I got with God. Because I don't want to have to go back and do it. Yeah. Everything back over. See, I'm, I'm in that process of doing my first works. I messed up. Not no more. We got to get this revelation. Okay. Let me go to verse 11 again. It says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. Not the entertainment. I had to throw that in. Because we done been entertained to death. We 
can't, we can't enjoy just straight right, Holy Ghost teaching. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to reprove, rebuke, and exhort us. We want you to entertain us. Yes. We want you to tell us, this is your season. Uh -huh. Get up, turn, turn around three times. And then have your neighbor pull you out and say, I'm pulling you out. How many times you done been pulled out by your neighbor and you still in there? Because you're not doing what you need to do to get out. You have to repent. But we want to be entertained. But I'm not the one. Hello. I can see what's wrong with the That's church. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I am, as it were, a surgeon. Hello. I'm not going to put no band-aid on your cancer. All right. All right. You finna get cut. Mm -hmm. I've been cut. Yes. But I'm not going to leave you to bleed to death. I'm going to sew you back up. All right. After I get out of you, what I need to get. All right. All right. That's what God is trying to do. The church is in a mess. But God still loves us. He loves us enough to chasten us. To get us back in line. So he can what? Bless us. Yeah. So this is what he's saying, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. That's why he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not the entertainment of the saints, but for the perfecting. Mm -hmm. To bring us to a place of maturity. <clears throat> Amen. Okay. For the work of the ministry. We learned the work of the ministry is what? Reconciling men. To him, to Christ. For the edifying or the what? Building up of the body, Christ. And how many know sometime before you can build, you got to tear down? Right. Amen. Amen. We're going through a renovation at my house where we used to have a deck. We wanted to build something else. They had to tear down the deck. See, and here's another one of the problems that God keeps telling me about. We trying to build over stuff we need to tear down. That's right. Amen. We need to ask God, don't don't us don't assume you know you. Because you don't. The Bible said, Cursed is a man that trusts in man and make his flesh his own. The Bible said, He that trusted in his own heart is a fool. I put emphasis on. If you trust your own heart, you are a fool because your heart will lie to you. The Bible said the heart of man is, what, what is I want to get the whole thing, is deceitful above all things and desperately, not just wicked, it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't know your own heart. That's why David said, Lord, you try me and know me. You see if there be any wicked way in me. Then lead me in the way of me. You better ask God to search you. He'll show you stuff you didn't even know was there. Matter of fact, he'll show you stuff you was trying to hide. Right. That's what he'll do. He'll show you. And then he'll wait for you to say, yes, Lord. Because even when he show you you, you yes. still got to confess. Yes. You can still lie to yourself. Yes. <laughs> but this is what he gave these gifts for. Thank you. Look at verse 13. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. We talked about that last week. And the knowledge of the Son of God into a what? Perfect. A perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the 
fullness of Christ. You know what you ought to be working towards? That place where Jesus said, the prince of this world coming, but he ain't got nothing in me. Because how many times do I say, if he ain't got nothing in me, can't get nothing out. You don't believe me? Go try to get something out of a bank account you ain't got nothing in <laughs> You're going to get that little negative, okay. overdrawn. Mm, they coming for their money. <laughs> Amen. That's what I want. When the devil comes to try to get something out of me, negative. You ain't got nothing in me. Can't get nothing out. He can't get you to hate nobody if you ain't got hate in you. The reason why you hate folk, because, you know, we blame other folk for I hate you. I'm trying to tell you, I don't care what nobody do to you. If you don't have hate in you, you can't hate them. Yeah, you, you, you could be trying to hate them and can't hate them. Because it's not in you. Do we get that? We do what's in us to do. Yes, yes. You always find yourself lying. That's because you got lying in you. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you look around, you 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 just a busybody. Why? Because right? that's what's in you. Can't hold water. Why? Huh? You better get the revelation. Because God said, I want, I want to use my people. I need my yeah. people to get right. Because mm -hmm. I was looking at something. On, 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 um, somebody had asked me a question. And I was trying to check the question out. And then it started running up on some more stuff. And, and that, it, I, I, I said, God, make us as willing as the world is to allow evil spirits to come into them. Voodoo, do you know voodoo folk, they open themselves up to these evil spirits. They want to be possessed. And what do we do? God want to possess us and we Cause, cause, uh, cause there's some prerequisites for him possessing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the devil come in and you a hoarder, got mess everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll still come in, yeah. cause he messy like that. Yeah. <laughs> but not God. God ain't like that. God come in. You ask God to come in. He come. He come. Look at all that junk you got in your life. He said, okay. No problem, I'll come in, but this got to go, that got to go, this. In other words, you're going to have to let me clean up this stuff. And by the time, let me tell you something about God. By the time, if you really let him do what he wants to do in your life, by the time he gets through, it ain't going to be much left. It ain't. Because even when you look at television, if we really did it according to the book, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are um, honest, whatsoever things are just, just the next next time you get ready to turn on television, put that scripture right next to that. And then everything you think you want to watch, measure it up by that. Is it true? Most of it, if you, you right there, you, you say, well, I can't watch that. <laughs> Just, just put that there. See how much TV you watch. It won't even make it. It won't make it. Because most of the news is a lie. You see what happened when we really started getting back to the word of God? It started cleaning you out. See, once, once I got there, that's why I'm... I, I just flip through the TV and end up just, well, cut it off. Nothing, nothing to watch. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody say, Jesus is getting it ready. Oh, yes. That great. Yes. Come see, you got to let him get everything out of you. Yes. This is what he said. Because he's looking for what? A mature, a perfect man to the fullness. Watch this, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with what? Every wind of doctrine. <clears throat> By the slight of men and cunning crafty. Yes. Whereby, listen to what it said, they lie in yes. wait yes. to deceive. Yes. They're trying to deceive. Uh -huh. But when you know the truth, right. you know the only defense against a lie is the truth. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. I want to know what you teach me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't have no respect to person. I respect this book right here. Mm -hmm. I can like you today because you teaching the truth and turn you off tomorrow because you starting to teach something that ain't the truth. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I was liking a certain person, and then all of a sudden they get deep into their teaching. I said, well, that's it for them. Because the devil mixes the truth with the lie. But watch this. I have truth is a whole lie. If it got a smidget of it. Ain't that what the book say? Little leaven does what? A little. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things which is the head. He is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body, fitly framed, fitly joined together and compacted by that which what? Every joint supplies. So that's why every joint got to be in its proper place. Every joint, every joint. I'm putting emphasis on that to let you know you are important in your place. According to that which every, don't you know a body that is um, well fed, that means you're feeding, putting in the body what should be in the body. It's hard for diseases to get in. Because the body will work to defend itself. It's, it's designed that way. Your, your body is designed. You know, that's why when Rona did what, when Rona was at her height, who was it killing? Folk that had precondition, diabetes, all these things. That's who it was killing. Because their immune system was what? Compromised. But when your immune system is right, mm -hmm. you don't even have to take all these drugs and all of this because your, your body will naturally. Most drugs, when they are legit drugs, are somehow, some way mimicking what God has already put in your body. Mm -hmm. wow. Insulin, your body makes insulin. What's the problem? When your body ain't making it right, then you got a problem. So now we got to do this to, but if, if your body was what? Function. You know what's wrong with the church? It ain't functioning properly. Because all the parts ain't right. That's why I pray God heal your people. And you know what he did when he got ready? He sent his word. That's why the devil don't want the truth to be preached. You don't care if you preach the word, just don't preach the truth. <laughs> preach out the Bible, that's fine. Just add to it and take from it. I mean, I, I heard that this, this one preacher, and he was dealing with homosexuality. And I was like, you sure took the long way around. We could have cut to the chase on that. <laughs> the problem with homosexuality is simple. It's a, it's a sin. Just like lying and anything else. Right. The Bible, for the first thing, 
when you really look at it, homosexuality, lesbianism, it doesn't even make good sense mm -hmm. when you believe the Bible. Because he made them male and female because he saw the right to see. Yes. That's why he made them male and female and brought them together. Mm -hmm. Two men. Because <laughs> a man ain't got nowhere to put another, take, take in another man's seed and produce nothing. But when you don't receive the truth, mm -hmm. then you got to make up something to try to pacify your conscience. Mm -hmm. I was like, we could have we could have made this a real short video. We didn't have to go through all of this because he was talking about he went and asked a, a homosexual preacher that wrote a book to try to justify homosexuality. For the first thing, I ain't read no book trying to justify homosexuality. Ain't no need for me to even read that. All I got to do is read this book. Ain't no justification for it. Are you understanding? But, but you see what's happening in the church. We got to get back to it. And I'm not homophobic. I ain't afraid of no homosexuals. I ain't afraid of my no. I'm, I'm actually... I'd be careful. You gotta be careful how you say right, stuff. Right. Cause folk will sound bite you. Right, right. So you have to be careful. Yeah. So maybe I don't say that. Yeah. I don't want them to sound bite you. Yeah, I had to say that off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you say off camera so they can't sound bite you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But I'm actually, God is not homophobic. He's for the homosexual. That's why he tells them to what? Repent. And I agree, some of them were born that way. That's why they got to be born again. Hallelujah. Some of y'all were born liars. As a matter of fact, all of us were born liars. But you don't teach no child a lie. You just do it. Born selfish. You are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Whatever your particular sin is, that's why you've got to be what? Born again. So I'm not going to argue with you if you tell me you were born that way. I'm just going to tell you that's why Jesus came, so you can be born again. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. It ain't that complicated. You just got to stick with the book. Stop trying to be politically correct and be biblically correct. All right. Amen. Now listen what he said. I got to read a little bit more of this. And he says, um, verse 16, let me read again. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Mm -hmm. Every part has to be working right. Mm -hmm. Making increase of the body unto the what? Edifying or the building up of itself where? In love. In love. Now, I'm going to read two more verses. We're going to jump over to 13. Listen to what he said. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth, what? Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity or the emptiness of their mind. Having the understanding, what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance or the lack of knowledge that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling, or you become callous, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. Greediness with both hands. Y'all like, y'all, some people like, like my baby KK, when she was little, she was in the high chair, and it was back in the day when we was poor. We were so poor, we couldn't afford that last OR, we just poke. <laughs> <laughs> and like Deke was talking about uh, living in the project, we lived in the project, but we knew something about that. Um, government cheese and eggs, we knew something about that. That's what we ate at the end. 
Amen. Sometimes you, you, you almost had to get full on some popcorn. It was at that point. And so this, this day, we were eating breakfast for dinner. And so um, KK, she was sitting in her little high chair. She had biscuits in this hand. She had biscuit in this hand. Then she looked on the plate and still had some biscuit on the plate. So what she did, she looked at this hand, she looked at this hand. They were full, so she did like. <laughs> That's how some folk with sin got sin in both hands and still ain't saying. <laughs> Greedy. Work all uncleanness with greediness. Can't be satisfied. But look what he said in verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be ye have heard him and have been taught by him. And the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation that what? That old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I took a little longer over here than I had anticipated. So we're going to turn, turn to 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Turn there right quick. And we're going to look there a little bit, but we're not going to. We're going to have to revisit this because I'm going to take my time on this. But we're just going to start here. We're going to start here. Because we done learned about the, 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 the gift. Now, don't get me wrong. We want, we want all the gifts function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're going to deal with the more excellent way. Okay. Go back one verse to 12 and 31. It says, but covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more what? Excellent. excellent way. What is the more excellent way? The way of love. Listen what he said, 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, remember we talked about the gift of tongues, and have not charity, if I don't have love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. In other words, I'm just making up a bunch of noise. That's how God hear me. I don't care how gifted you are. If you don't have love. Look at verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy. And as I said before, we got more prophets. We know what to do with it. More, and, and too many of them are prophet lying instead of prophesying. And let me tell you something, because I was looking at that thing and they were talking about voodoo. And I learned some stuff. The difference between voodoo and hoodoo. <laughs> <laughs> One day, voodoo deals with the magical side of voodoo, and hoodoo is the municipal side. Yeah, I learned that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a religion. It's at voodoo is African is African religion. It is a religion. And their God is the devil. And they seek to be possessed by demons. They got all kind of gods. Amen. And um, that's why you, you got to understand the spirit world is real. You don't be playing it. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. Because them demons ain't nothing nice. Mm -hmm. They ain't nothing nice. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but, but they were saying how this, this one lady, she is the high priestess. So she has to allow them spirits to come into her so she can minister to the people of the congregation. Oh my goodness. Just like we do here. And, but they come into her and she was saying, 
Sometimes she be scared because she don't know if she gonna make it out alive. Cause sometimes they come, some of them be so strong. <clears throat> and when they get through and leave her, she thinks she just waking, she just be tired and thinks she just waking up. She done, done, they've been possessed, they say sometimes for nine hours. But during that period, she prophesied. She ministering to the people, telling them stuff, because that spirit in her is working through. And so they allow themselves to be. I say, God, give us the zeal. Help us to understand that you want to be in us like that. Where we're not speaking our own words. We're not giving our own opinion. But we saying what you saying yeah. through us. Yeah. We got to understand what grace is. Yes. Grace is God working in you the will and do of his good pleasure. It ain't grace didn't come to cover your sin. It came to work through you. Came to cleanse you. Get the revelation. But you got to let God, you got to let him purge out everything in you that ain't like him. Let me show you what God told me. This is going to help somebody. Turn right quick. Um, Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. Right quick. We almost done for today. See, I'm be here until 6. So. Yeah, y'all some of y'all are saying, well, I ain't planning on it. <laughs> 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 if you gotta leave, just get up and tip out. So we, we finna go hard. Okay. Amen. Because we'll sit up and watch TV all night. But God finna get us back into this. Yeah. Jeremiah 15. I'm not gonna be... Uh, Right today, like Paul, I said, y'all notice I said, not today. I'm not going to promise I'll never be like Paul. You know, he preached until it was, you know, young man just fell asleep, fell out the window. But then he went and raised him back up. Okay, look at verse, um, verse, yeah, let's go to verse 15. He says, O oh Lord, thou knowest, remember me, and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Watch this. Thy words were found, and I did what? I ate them. See, when you find the words, you don't just find it, you eat it. Thy word have I hid that I might not sin. This is what he said. Thy word was found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of... You want joy? Mm -hmm. Get in the word and eat it. Amen. It'll give you joy in the midst of sorrow. Because yes. it brings hope to your life. He said, thy word was found, I ate them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Watch this. I sat not in the assembly of mockers. I wasn't running to the comedy shows. Mm -hmm. Whether they were in Vegas or in somebody's church. Because now we done let the comedians yeah. in the church. Right. I sat not in the assembly of mockers. Nor rejoiced. I sat where? Oh. Y'all better learn how to get along if you want God. I sat alone, why? Because of thy hand or because of thy word, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual, my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fail? Now watch this. Therefore thus saith the Lord, if thou what? Return. Return. Then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. Now watch this. Pay close attention. And if thou take forth the what? Precious. precious from the vile. What is precious? The word of God. What is vile? The word of the devil. Mm -hmm. 
you have to take it, you take forth the precious from the vow. You eat the precious and you discard the vow. Okay? If you do this, and what do we say if is? A condition. Because sometimes we get mad at God because God ain't moving like we want him to move when we ain't moving like he want us to move. If is a condition. Anytime you see that word if, that means you have to meet the condition if you want to experience the promise. So he said, if you take forth the precious from the vow, then shalt thou be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not unto not thou unto them. How many want to be as the mouth of God? Amen. Let me tell you what that means. That means every time you open up your mouth, every time you speak, it's as though God would speak. Yeah. That's how it was with Samuel. That's how they knew he was a prophet. Why? Every time he opened up his mouth, it was the word of God. And God will never let his word fall to the ground. That's why when Samuel came to, to uh, Bethlehem to uh, anoint David, they was shaking. Are you coming in peace? <laughs> See, because we done, we done, we, we done, <laughs> now watch this. We done confused God with Santa Claus. Oh. Oh. Just bringing presents. Mm -hmm. Saints, y'all better read that Old Testament. Understand the God we serve and he ain't changed. Oh, yeah. Me and one of my friends was talking about Old Testament, how when, uh, who was that? Um, Aaron's two sons oh. offered strange fire mm -hmm. before God and he killed them. The fire that should have consumed the sacrifice consumed them. Then you say, well, that was Old Testament. Well, let's talk about Ananias and Sapphira. That's new. And what was their crime? They lied to the Holy Ghost. But what was their mistake? They thought they were lying to men. God ain't changed. But I don't know about you, but I want, I want, when I speak, I don't want to just be speaking vain words. But you got to separate the precious from the vile. You got to watch what's out of the abundance of the heart, what? Whatever you putting in is what's going to come. Okay, let's go back over here real brief. We, we about done for today. Look at verse 2 again in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Do I have the gift of prophecy? Watch this. And understand all mysteries. This is why a lot of, lot of people leave the church and go to voodoo and all this kind of stuff because they want fast power. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And he gives them power. Don't fool yourself. You remember that one lady that was prophesying about Paul saying, these are the men that show us. She had a demon in her and she was telling the truth. She was making money for her masters. That means she was, you don't make, you don't profit lie and get a good reputation. People, people figure out you ain't telling the truth, they gonna stop coming to you. So she was hitting it because she had an evil spirit in her. See, that's why we don't get all caught up just because somebody can prophesy. Oh, I don't get caught up because you can hear. I don't get caught up in your gift. I want to know how you're living. Right. Right. Some preachers can preach until, like I always say, the hair stand up on this bald head. <laughs> <laughs> but then we can't live nothing. That's a problem. Because the gifts should be bringing us to a place of righteousness. I teach myself. 
Because this come to me before it come to you. Sometimes I'll be out there on the rock just to preaching to myself. And then I turn the corner and I'm just running my mouth and somebody right in my face. They're probably thinking, well, what is he? What's up with him? <laughs> I just speak, hey, and turn around and keep on. So I can understand all what? Mysteries. And all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains. Do, are y'all getting this? You can have all this gifting. And he said, and have not charity? I'm nothing. See, I don't want to be fully, just so gifted. Ain't got no love. I'm nothing. So what we're working on here is what? Love. And we're going to stop for the day. We're going to open up next year, though, because we're going to talk about love. Amen. We're going to get deep into it. Amen. We're going to see what the book says. Amen. Gonna, see, because some of this, <laughs> some folks will tell you, I love you, and nothing you can do about, about it. And then we, and I'd be like, uh, if that's love, you can keep that. If they tell you they love you, and then do a hate on you. I had somebody do that with my wife one time, did a hate on her, and then later in the day, when they say love you, don't can't do nothing about it, and ain't apologize yet. That ain't love. That ain't love. Let's stop it. Let's, let's be real. That's what I teach here. Let's be real. You examine yourself by the word. The word tells you whether you love or hate. Yes. The Bible says that the lying lips hateth the soul that is afflicted by it. You lying on folk, you talking about you love them, you was a lie. You hate them. And the quicker you reveal, the quicker you get it, and say, God, help me, yes. you can get to live. Yes. Yes. Amen. But we're going to look at the next, next week, we're going to look at the characteristics oh, yeah. of love. Yes. That starts in verse 3. He just let us know we won't get it because we need them uh -huh. to do the work. But the more excellent way yeah. is love. Yeah. Amen. 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 Give God a praise. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. And